Good morning, traders and investors. Welcome to this Wednesday, August 10th, August 10th edition of Pre-Market Prep with Stock Odds, Joel Alconan, joined by Rob Friesen here on a robust day in the markets. Uh, let's take a look at the futures markets, how they're trading, and uh, get some strategies from Rob for how to play these kind of moves. Uh, S&Ps are up 68 and three quarters handles at 41.93 and a quarter. Uh, crude in the red by buck 24, 89.27. Gold having a good day. Uh, that's up four bucks at 18, 16, 30. Silver in the green too by 30 cents at 20, 78. Bitcoin futures, they're knocking on the door at 25, 24K, up $895, 23.975. And Ethereum futures, they're looking the same. They're looking north. They're up $147 at 18.38. Uh, I'll stop the screen share here. I'll bring in Rob. Rob, you have these have these moves in the market and uh it's always easy to witness the move and have good positions on but uh strategies after the move protecting profits or initiating new positions is uh a little bit more difficult that's our topic for today uh i'll let you take it away uh let's see here let's not we don't want that one let's see next screen screen button there we go all right um yeah it is it's always challenging when you get a big gap up after a news event and most of the opportunity then if you uh were waiting you know like waiting for the news i mean there was some some indication that you could take a more risk on uh, approach to today uh, because there was there was hints that you know the number could be a bit softer than what we've seen you know just like we had that extreme sentiment reading um, and then we you know next month in July there we had it a bit lower so the market rallied off that pretty nice um, same kind of approach to um, the inflation situation that we had such a an extreme the last time that uh, it was likely to be a little bit softer because we've seen pressure come off uh, some of the commodities, especially oil, right, which is a, a big uh, factor in in things. So um, there was some indication, and you know you could have you could have played it that way for the overnight returns. But if you're just coming in waiting for the number, you see it. We have the massive move pre market here, right? And you're not in it then what do you do right then what do you do joel right <laughs> so to chase um, or not to chase that is the question well um a shout out to uh, one of our subscribers stock out subscribers uh, greg there um i like how he's tracking uh baskets for the opportunity um that presents itself at some point you know each day in, the, in in how the baskets move, so not necessarily uh, in full position at the open, but taking a third of a position or a half a position um, for that information feedback loop, and then leaving the other capital for you know the strategic opportunity when the baskets have have done something, and they and the risk to that is that maybe you don't get a chance to deploy the rest of your capital, but you still make a profit on the day, right? I mean, that, you, you know, that's, that's acceptable too. Um, but there's op definitely opportunity to, you know, deploy capital. So the problem is, uh, you know, stocks gapped up and, you know, now we're sitting up there and are we going to pull back and fill the gap? What's it going to be like by the end of the day? You don't know, but this goes back to a principle that um, you and I understood, you know, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, was if you're going to if you're going to focus on things during the day, um, generally speaking, strong stocks, if you can buy them on pullbacks, you know, is better than than always trying to bottom fish for a weak stock on that day yeah. is every single stock up today no but there are stocks that are up so let, let's look at uh two here one i pulled this one from our russell 2000 list 
Um, so the odds on that were, let's see here, plug. Uh, so, you know, around 54% with good performance, 0.444. Um, so that was what was expected for today for a uh, plug. And here's what it's done so far. It, it didn't have, you know, the same sort of gap up um, that other stocks did. So the starting point was a little bit, you know, um, you know, maybe better from that perspective because it was still climbing pre-market. Um, and then it opened and it, it shot up and it's now higher than that, even though that the spy kind of pulled back from its high or the Russell may have pulled back from its high or whatever. Um, it's, it's uh, let's say stronger relative to, okay. Um, now, end phase was off of our um, list here for the S&P 500. Uh, are we frozen? Let's see here. Come on. End phase was off our list, and it gapped up, but it's pulled back almost the same amount, right? Uh -huh. So let's take a look at end phase. So out of the gate, so first of all, that got, got pretty pricey. Um, pre-market and right out of the gate it just sold off okay now we still have the odds for it from the open to close but if if the open to close was expected to perform slightly and you get this kind of a starting point isn't that more attractive than you know even what the open price was so that's kind of the argument is that it's it's weaker than the market it's weaker than some of our other stocks so we don't want to be necessarily uh, going in and, and jumping early because that divergence is apparent. But there is an opportunity, usually at some point, for some mean reversion during the day. And that's, and that's what some of our subscribers, like Greg, are looking for is, is I've got my lists, right? I'm tracking them, and I'm looking for that expansion to where I can get the, the mean reversion on still what I expected would be operating well, um, but had failed initially to perform. So you might have some capital already in it. And uh, of course that gives you great information like, hey, I'm underwater on it. Um, but there can be an opportunity uh, during the day to deploy on that particular stock. So in, in general terms, Focus on strong stocks in strong groups to buy on pullbacks. For the short side, would be looking for weaker stocks to then potentially short. And so it's better, this whole design is better if you have a lit from our web screener, if you have a list of stocks that are your preferred long candidates and you have a list that are your preferred short candidates, it gives you that flexibility to say, which stocks on my short list are actually proving it on the tape, proving it in terms of performance that there's an opportunity to short, and which ones are proving that there's an opportunity to buy. And the key would be buying the stronger stocks on a pullback that's shallow, um, and shorting the weaker stocks on a rally that's shallow. So do you remember when we kind of learned that back in the late 90s, Joel? Yeah. Um, just, just, I mean, what, what sense is it? Is the market super strong and you want to go buy all the weak stocks? I mean, is that really going to benefit you? If, if the market had uh, a real reversal and those stocks were maybe defensive, and we saw a rotation out of the discretionary into the, into the defensive, that could be an argument. Like today, if the, if the market starts filling the gap, which I don't know why it would if you know, this type of catalyst has any teeth to it, um, you know, sure, other bad news can come along and things like that, but like just on this catalyst alone, there's no reason for the market to pull back and fill the gap today. I mean, the bulls, bulls got the, you know, they got the goods on the day. And look at the daily here. You know, what are we doing? We're, we're popping back up, significant gap. And, uh, you know, we're 
we've got a real chance at clearing all this sideways nonsense that we've had, you know, which is going back and forth here. We have a chance to clear that. And so I think the bulls are going to want to hang on to that. So I think defending this level is pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, but in the field of stocks, you're going to have stocks that are, are strong and stocks that are weak. Um, and so there's no point on a day like today to go to focus on those weak stocks unless I, again, I said that if there's a real change in sentiment to risk off from risk on, uh -huh. and there's the rotation out of tech, out of discretionary, you know, even out of industrials and over to uh, more the, the staples and the defensive side of things, then yeah, you know, you could maybe participate in some of that. And your, your, your basket tracking is going to give you, you know, that information. And so the more, the more that you can prepare, the more things that you have in the pipeline, the more uh, ability you have to shift themes and capture something that's, you know, in process, uh, the better off it's going to be. So just remember, you know, you can deploy full position at the open. You could deploy half a position at the open and leave half for, for later. You could just track things and deploy strategically. And I want to add one more component to this. We, okay. did, talk, we did talk yesterday about kind of focusing on uh, maybe one theme, but, but there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot that people struggle with with the execution side, not necessarily the research side right? Even combining statistics and technicals, but it's that execution side. So let's just say that it's middle of the day, you've seen some expansion that you, um, you know, like it meets your criteria. There's the opportunity for some of that to, to come back in and for you to make money on your relative performance. Um, or you've had a situation where the strong stocks have pulled back and there's still, you know, still some substance to them being strong. Um, and you want to capture that, how do you deploy? So if the market is fairly stable, you could actually put your limit orders out there and, you know, allow the, the noise and the chop of the market to get you filled at, at, at good prices so that you deploy a basket of, say, 10 stocks, and you might be filled, you know, two or three of them, and then you got to wait a little bit. You got to move your orders around or whatever. So there's there's one approach is trying to get the best limit orders that you can at the time. The other the approach is obviously um, market orders. Just do the whole basket at one time. And the caveat is that you're going to have some slippage. You're going to have you're paying the bid ask spread, and and that could be fairly wide on some stocks. Um, so if you if you have a stable sort of choppy market at the time you want to deploy, uh, the limit orders on ARCA can be can be a strategic uh, way to do it. But you have to be ready then to, you know, address the ones that are not filled on, and you also have to be ready to hedge off if necessary. Um, so it'd be like deploy your ten limit orders, right? Uh -huh. move, them, move them into the sweet spot a little bit here and there, still wanting to provide liquidity, have your single point and click hedge standing by if, if you want. And as you're getting filled, you know, put on the hedge a bit and, and wait. Now, if the market breaks to the direction you want, you can always remove the hedge. So that's part of this art form of getting things on and maintaining some protection either standing by or at the time you're getting filled all right rob one question from yesterday and i don't know if we can go back to it uh dan back is asking um how did uh your algo pick out ahco going back to yesterday for a short in your daily stock pick i was looking at the short disc but traded another name for the short side can you go back and look at that at all rob ahco from yesterday or do you not have that ability? It looks like it looked like it was a, a decent trade. Just wanted to know what dynamics you were looking at there. Um, just a sec here. Let 
Yeah, it was that was a long selection. Odds were sixty point seven five. Yesterday it was a, a long. Yeah, we. I mean, this is a long only list. The top twenty and the and the okay. top ten, like the top ten S and P is long only. And the reason that we did that is because you know people were saying, "Hey, I'm having trouble even getting locates on some ETFs at my my broker dealer." Um, you know, I'm trading my IRA. I just I just need. I just need long selections I and, gotcha. and and a great way to hedge, even in my IRA. I gotcha. well, that would be your inverse ETFs, right? So, uh -huh. so uh, the S and P 500 top 10 is a long only list. The Russell 20 is a long only list. Now, that doesn't mean that this is what professionals do: is trade only long. No, we love long and short ideas. And in fact, uh, we have some other lists that are going to be coming out, uh, which are, you know, larger amounts of symbols, and they're completely long and short opportunities, both. Okay. So we're okay. going to have that coming out very shortly here for you. Um, but on ACA, AHCO, yes, it was a long. Let's uh, scroll back and see uh, what happened on it. Okay. Uh, so we'll put it on the one minute and just kind of yeah go maybe what wait well he um, there's a little confusion here because he thought you had it as a short so um, well it, you know it was a long it it did open down from the previous uh, close right and um, so it uh, you know it popped up initially and then it kind of gave it back right is that yeah. right? okay yeah. so I mean it's you know, it's one of those things where, hey, right out of the gate, you know, it performed. And, you know, there there is a, a, some of our subscribers that literally get that first half hour move right out of the gate. Long, long ideas, short ideas or long ideas and hedged uh, and or, or just standing by and right out of the gate in the first 30 minutes. You get that peak volatility, you get the greatest percentage of an ATR in the shortest period of time, and they lock, they lock the profit right out okay. of the gate. So okay. that could have been a qualifier, you know, it, it, it moved up and did a matching high intraday and started to fail, come back through the VWAP, came back through the previous days open. And these, these types of crossovers are really important in, an, in our price level discussions, you know, previous close is important. Today's open is important, right? VWAP, I mean, these are all things that, that make, make a difference in terms of what is the price action relative to something that we can, you know, latch onto, some price level that we can uh, focus on. And, we, you know, you don't have to analyze every single penny of the dollar. It, there's only key areas that are um, qualifying, you know, what, is it crossing over its previous close, right? Is it, uh, you know, is, is, it, is it rallying back up through after having tagged the low of the day, like we looked at one symbol recently, you know, it, it did fill the gap and rallied back up. Um, so anyway, just watch your price levels. Okay. 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 All right. We're going to wrap it up for today. S&P's coming back towards a high. Uh, 42,150 is what we hit in the pre-market. 4,200 uh, is your session high. We're right there right now. Not much for you there, folks. Uh, 4,204 and a quarter. That was your May 31st high. Uh, so see if we got some work to do in a 4,200 handle. Uh, thanks for joining us. Pre-market prep with Stock Odds. Back with you guys tomorrow. Everyone have a great day. Thank you.